Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, it's morning coffee and films with the Romanian Film Festival. I'm Otilia Baraboy, uh, the manager of the festival, and I have here my colleague, Ziliana. We founded the festival in 2014. Um, we uh, collaborated with our friend Marina Ajaja, uh, who is going to talk about the Georgian film that has a Romanian cinematographer, Oleg Mutu. And uh, we've been um, organizing these morning events um, due to the quarantine and due to the, um, our need to stick together, stay together, and talk about the things that we love that bring us together coffee, first of all, we're in Seattle, and great films from Eastern Europe and from Romania. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk more about the films that we have as we um, 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 uh, um, advance with our discussion. Uh, Marina Ajaja uh, is our long-term collaborator. Uh, we met with her in 2013 uh, because we um, were um, wondering why there were not more Romanian films at SIF, you know? <laughs> and uh, this is how the idea of uh, having a Romanian film festival in collaboration with SIF started. And we remember um, Ilana and I and the, our Ioana Miron, the, the other co-founder at that time, uh, went to visit with Marina. And Marina, we had a wonderful discussion and we were so welcome. Uh, by uh, Marina and Sif. You remember, I remember we visited, she uh, uh, did a tour with us at Sif Film Center, so we saw where everything was happening. And then we decided that uh, we need to create the buzz, you know, for more Romanian films. Um, our community somehow was not in touch with the Sif community up to that point. So it was a revelation, I think, for both sides, for us, that there is a place, Sif is a place uh, for the dialogue and for bringing all these wonderful films from Eastern Europe that we were seeing. And um, there was a, a lot of um, openness to uh, start a Romanian film festival. And I remember Marina said, oh, you need to create the buzz. You need, we need to bring more films at SIF, you know, in the spring. And then the Romanian film festival that will happen in November will kind of build on that first impression of Romanian films. So we can work together to bring a lot of Romanian films in Seattle, to Seattle. So this is how it, uh, it, it started. And we are in the seventh year. Um, uh, unfortunately, SIF got canceled, as you know, this year. We had Romanian, great Romanian films programs for SIF that we hope to bring to uh, our online version of the Romanian film, film festival in November. So uh, stick with us. We, we are using a platform, and I'm going to share the screen. For the seventh edition of the Romanian Film Festival, we're going to use Filmaby, a platform designed by Bogdan Darev, who's in the audience today, and he's, uh, I hope he can tell us more uh, about it. Uh, you can see that there, you can see movies, you can read blogs, um, there's an art gallery, and there is a page for the Romanian Film Festival that I'm going to open right now. Um, curated by ARC, American Romanian Culture Society. And if you go down, you see we have uh, a few sessions of visit, you know, coffee, morning coffee and films. And uh, I'm very happy today that we, we're hosting a, um, a session with Marina because we, 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 we were talking about it and we felt that Marina is such a crucial um, collaborator for what we've been doing and achieving for the past seven years because our link to SIF and to the local film um, industry, let's say, would not have been the same without her. So Marina, we're very grateful that you're here Thank today. You. You're um, welcome, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see that we, besides Romanian film parking, we also have Eastern European films like the Bulgarian Aga or In Bloom that uh, we talked about, Victoria, that's also a Romanian-Bulgarian co-production. Uh, Aferim and Alia Dada documentaries. And we're going to bring more this summer, so stay tuned. Okay. And also, we will start building up the moment for the Romanian Film Festival online. Another uh, side that you should know about Marina is that she's not only a CIF, you know, programmer for SIF, bringing us all these jewels from Eastern Europe and Russia. She's also a poet. She just published In Deep, um, a collection of poems that I love. I um, 
uh, we talked about it in, in, uh, in a short interview that she gave us uh, on, uh, that you can also read on, on our platform, Stories uh, Off the Wall, uh, Current in Writings and Interviews. She was the first one that we interviewed for, for this series. Um, I do recommend it. You can find it here. You know, so you can, I can send you the link also. Um, uh, it is such a perfect timing in a way. I know we talked about it, Marina, that it would have been wonderful to have a public launch, like to meet and to uh, drink a glass of wine and talk about your wonderful poetry, because it's a poetry of your travels, of your journeys, of your discoveries, uh, covering many years and your impressions of the places that you visited as a stiff uh, film programmer and uh, the people that you met and also about the need to go in deep, um, uh, in deep, <laughs> and it's not in blue, mm -hmm. it's like and it's <laughs> such a wonderful, <laughs> I think, connection between the film and the book. Um, so it's, um, it is right in blooming. Uh -huh, so in we're bloom. gonna talk to you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you need to go deep to be in bloom, right? And it's uh, that's uh, right. It, I think it's so oh, it's a wonderful um, uh, Freudian slip, right? <laughs> As we <laughs> call, call it. Um, yeah. Um, and um, uh, if you would like to uh, say more about your poetry, Marina, how you are, how you connect the two sides of your creativity in in writing, um, <laughs> your um, background, your uh, poetry circle, maybe how do you connect with the poets, local poets in Seattle, and how do you, how you connect with the uh, local filmmakers or international filmmakers that you made, uh, that you with whom you made contact throughout the years. Um, uh, I think you are like what the French would call in the 19th century a dandy, in a way dandy, because you you live what you believe, you are what you believe, and you do your your work is your life is a piece of art in a way, you know, because it feels that there's no dis disconnection, at least from the outside, you know, <laughs> from the but outside, when, yeah. <laughs> but when you get in deep, you know, right. <laughs> So um, I'm going to ask Marina a few questions and then we're going to open the floor uh, for more. At some point we can, uh, as we talk about the film, um, um, we, I, I know most of you have seen it. Uh, not, I, if you want to see the trailer, let me know. We can show the, briefly show the, the trailer. So the first um, question would be, so can you tell us more about your professional path as a uh, uh, film festival programmer at SIF. So how did it all start, Marina, for you? Well, let's see. Uh, it started when I was studying film in St. Petersburg in Russia. And um, I had been living in Russia in the 90s. So that would be uh, 90 to about 97. And um, was invited to participate in a, in a class at the Television and Film Institute in St. Petersburg. And I had a teacher, his name was uh, Simeon Aranvich. And this was a very dark, dark time in Russia, the 90s. But um, I was busy see, catching up and learning about film. So, um, it really didn't matter to me. I mean, of course it mattered to me, but um, I spent a lot of time at Dome Kino because I had a card because I was a student and I went to Dome Kino every day. And I began to watch films because they were not English subtitles and the Russians do simultaneous voiceovers, which is horrible. I began to not listen and pay attention to dialogue. I just watched the language of cinema. And I think that this was such a great thing for me to really understand more about film, about show and don't tell, um, these elements of cinema that are so, so elemental and important. So I got very good at figuring out what was going on in films without, uh, without dialogue. 
um, when I returned to the States, I thought, what job would I like the most? What, what would suit me the best? And I decided, because I'd always been a fan of SIF, Seattle International Film Festival, I loved it even when I wasn't working there because it was my only way to see films from the area that I was interested in, which was the X block countries, which there are 28 of them. So occasionally SIF would have films from that area. So I was always looking, looking out for them. And I volunteered at SIF when our, when our offices were at the Egyptian and I answered the phone every other Monday. And apparently I answered the phone so well that they asked me if I would be interested in doing other things. And my first job there was ticketing, and the nightmare of my life. <laughs> it was really very difficult job. But I, I want to say that one of the um, elements of film for me, I was interested in 20th century Russian poets. For instance, Anna Akhmatova. And my teacher, Aradovich, made a documentary about Akhmatova. And I got involved in trying to promote that film in America. It's a very dense Russian style documentary. And when Daryl McDonald saw this film that I was trying to promote, and Daryl was one of the founders of SIF, when he saw that film, he said, okay, I think you can program films, Marina. And that's what started. And that started in, uh, I think, 97, 98. So um, I became part of the team of, of programmers and concentrated just on, uh, well, I actually, I saw everything. I'm really avid watcher, viewer. I saw almost everything. Uh, um, but I did concentrate for SIF on getting some of these films from the X block, which wasn't so easy because at that time they weren't professional. You'd call somebody, you'd, you know, ask for a director and they'd say, the director's in here and then they hang up, you know, no, can I take a message? Who is this? No, nothing like that. So... Uh, now it's completely different. They're, they're very professional. Everybody has learned, and it's, it's a completely different thing. But at the time, it was quite difficult, and sometimes I would have to wake up my husband, who's Russian, and ask him, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, you have to make this phone call for me because I have to have this film. <laughs> so th that's, you know, the kind of things I did. Now it's quite different, but you know, that's how I started, as a volunteer at SIF. Okay. Uh, thank you, Marina. That's wonderful, wonderful journey. Who would have thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> that it started the, this way, right? Um, and then what are you looking for when you select a film for, for the Seattle audience? Uh, okay. Well, I'm looking for films that have cinematography. Um, a lot of films don't. You'd be surprised how little thought is put into that element. I have to have cinematography. I like to feel something mysterious is going on, a puzzle that I'm going to unravel. I like to feel shaken up, not just because of shock or violence, but because maybe I never thought of, of things in, in the light that I'm seeing them. Um, I'm looking for some cultural or psychological insight, you know, cultural insights from films. Um, and I'm looking for original viewpoints to maybe old viewpoints. Um, because you can always make those old viewpoints. You know, they say that there aren't, there's four basic stories. So you're always looking at new viewpoints for different stories, looking for uh, 
uh, originality, and I kind of want realism, even if I'm having fantasy. <laughs> and, and, and I want um, filmmakers not to underestimate audience intelligence. I don't need everything spelled out. Uh, and of course, it's extremely wonderful to have a film that really brings off um, all your questions in the end. You know, you have a lot of questions, there's a lot of mystery, but everything comes together in the end. This is, you know, a sign of a, a talented filmmaker, I think. So that's what I'm looking for. And of course, I'm looking for representation and uh, country representation, gender rep representation. I mean, I hardly have to count because I'm always so interested in, in women's films. All of a sudden I'll look and I'll say, oh, I have five women and five men, how great. Know that it turned out that way. So I, I'm looking for that too. Wonderful, great. Uh, it's it's so valuable to hear, you know, what's going on when, when you have, it's such a tough choice, right? Um, and um, would you say, Marina, I know this is, it might be a tough question. What do all these films have in common? Uh, well, they really usually have a very strong dose of reality. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, very strong dose of reality. Uh, yeah, I would say that that's probably what they have in common. Um, even if they're they're uh, even if they're comedies or mm -hmm. or dark comedies, they start from a very realistic, um, visceral feeling. Okay. And I know In Bloom is one of your favorite films. Uh, I saw you before thinking that, oh, it would be wonderful to have Marina talk about this film for Morning Coffee and Films. I saw a post that, uh, that you uh, made on Facebook uh, quoting some of your favorite films and I recognized the poster for this one and I said oh my god this is a sign mm -hmm. another sign that uh, we 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 complement what we do you know uh, with, mm -hmm. with your work at SIF so uh, can you tell us more why is this one of your favorite films why in bloom is one of your favorite films because Eka takes that gun and throws it in the lake <laughs> that's why you know, what you have to uh, see the film, everybody. <laughs> yeah. What a there is a gun. <laughs> yeah. What a fantastic solution to the problem that's going to come up. And it, it's it's a simple little action, but she really breaks society's rules. She wastes the gun where a gun is very important in their world. And she she has the the power and the energy to you know find a solution let me just throw it in the water right so and, and you know other the other reasons is because of this uh very realistic picture of how things were um, you know, it takes place in 92, so lots of things have changed. When I was there, it was, I mean, you could find some streets like that, but it's quite different now. So, um, and I love the fact, I actually really like that there's two directors and that they found a way to collaborate and that uh, the that Nana Ektavashvili wrote the script, mm. you know, that she's the writer. There are lots of things that I liked about this film. I love the two protagonists. I love, you know, the way that they are. I love the, um, uh, the energy of this film, the screaming, the, you know, dealing with huge families. Yeah. Mm. And and now it's um, I know that the film is very complex. There's many things we can talk about. Uh, do you f do you see the film as a perfect construction, or there's a, a few weaknesses that you notice that oh, are, no, might I be noticeable it, from for an American I think, audience? 
I think there's some weaknesses. Um, I would say that um, they don't really help us. We have to figure yeah. out a lot of things on our own. Um, uh, <clears throat> they don't linger uh, with explanations. Things just move along and then you're left to kind of say, okay, I, I think I understand what's happening. So yeah, I think that um, American audiences need a little bit more um, hand feeding. Um, but personally, I just hate it when I'm watching a series and the beginning of the series, they do all these flashbacks as if you're too stupid to remember what's been going on. Uh -huh. um, I remember one series that I thought was really smart. They ended on a few sentences and then they began again on those sentences and started from there. But um, I think, you know, that there's quite a bit of work that an audience member has to do within Bloom to figure it out. Mm. All right. That, that might be a quality also, depending on what you like, right? Exactly. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, so was this film shown at SIF? Did you select it for SIF or oh, no? not yet? It's one of my famous fish that got away. Um, <laughs> I really wanted it for SIF, but sometimes the distributor has different plans for films and there's nothing you can do about it. So actually it's screened at Northwest Film Forum. Um, they were lucky enough to get it uh, quite a bit after SIF. And then we screened their next film, Happy Family, um, because I was already, you know, uh, they were on my radar and I was looking for the next thing that they're doing. And so um, we screened their next film, but no, SIF didn't screen it. It's not because we didn't want to though. Okay, great. So th this is this a film that the Seattle SIF audience would have loved, right? You think? Oh, I think considering. so. Yeah. I think so. I think we have, you know, really sophisticated viewers and they would have worked, done the work to figure out the film. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so I have another question and then we're, we're going to open the floor for your questions. Um, uh, the, critics, the critics have compared this film uh, or Georgian cinema, emerging uh, uh, cinema with new Romanian cinema. Uh, what do you think about this comparison, the cinematographer, and you said that you are looking for good cinematography when you select your films, and the cinematography in this film was made by Oleg Mutu, and I'm going to try to make another attempt to share my screen and show you, um, um, can you see now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So Oleg Mutu is Romanian Moldovan. He was born in the Republic of Moldova. Um, in Chisinau, um, and he's Romanian speaking. Uh, we're not going to go into history now, but uh, that was part of the world that belonged to Romania for uh, quite a long time. Um, Moldova. Uh, he, yes, Moldova. Um, mm -hmm. And he works in, I mean, uh, he is considered more of a Romanian. Now he works with Romanian directors, but also I would say that he makes the bridge between Romania and the far east, let's say Russia. And because he, not only he works with the, for this, uh, with these Georgian directors, he also works with um, Lovnita for, um, and the name for the the what what was the movie that we we saw oh, last? He, he <laughs> made, uh, yeah. he, well, he made he Donbass. made Donbas. Oh, yes, well, and Donbas. Not just Donbas, but Old Joy, yeah. a gentle yeah. creature, and the death of Mr. Lazarescu. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, three days, two days, uh, or four months, three weeks, two days. So he's done a lot of work. Yes. Um, yes. And I'm going to try to um, share with you all his films. Um, 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 I don't know if you see, I found a page <coughs> about, do you see my screen now? Yes, I do. So uh, Oleg Mutu, uh, you see all the films that he made here, United, you know, Don Yes, and United States of Love, it's a Polish film. Yeah. 
yeah um a gentle creature oh. with whom in bloom in the fog okay and you have here 10 more films and with the uh, for the four months three weeks and two days uh with um uh christian Mungiu, they got the the Khan uh Pan door in 2007 i think so mm -hmm. it's like it's it's premium quality cinematography here um, absolutely the, right, absolutely yeah yeah and Marina, what would you, so would, are, are there any features that you can, uh, that you observe that you can find com in common with what we call new Romanian cinema? And I'm sure that the audience, our audience is more familiar with Romanian cinema, but we, as we said, we, we showed uh, Don Bas last year, the Ukrainian film. And there's, there's a few things in common that kind of uh, uh, we mentioned that we could maybe highlight here, you know. Well, just talking about tonal quality, the tone, like the visuals, this light, this blue, which is kind of a turquoise. Um, I remember it very well in, in four days, three weeks, and two days. Or what is it? Four, four <laughs> yeah. months. You know. Yeah, four, three, uh, two. Four, three, yes, two. <laughs> yes. I, re I remember that turquoise color coloring, um, light blue, gray, dirty walls, uh, cr uh, uh, crumbling doors, interiors, littered, half deserted courtyards, empty streets, dark tunnels, pathways. These are all, all kind of uh, vision that you see through, through both film, both those film, I mean, both from both countries. Yeah, 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 and also the apartment. The I mean, New Romanian cinema is famous for filming like in closed space to give you that feeling of being trapped of claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, mm -hmm. there is a message of hope in everyone. Most uh, mostly, you have to know how to see it. And Marina has a great eye for for this uh, kind of aesthetic and the the low budgeting is aesthetic to turn the fact that there these are low budget films uh, that turn that. Uh, inconvenience into a, into a, an aesthetic trend. That's true. Minimalism. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, in, I mean, on on this note, I mean, do you have questions for Marina uh, about the film, about her career, about her poetry, anything? So please uh, don't forget to unmute, unmute yourself um, as you uh, speak. And I would like my. Uh, to make a comment and maybe move on to a, a question because you mentioned that kind of approach, non sequitur, that's so prominent in Eastern European fiction. So you read a novel and it jumps from one scene to another or they embrace postmodernism, that kind of fracturing narrative. And you see that in film. And um, more and more, it feels like, um, uh, poets, writers have started collaborating with filmmakers or they themselves, like uh, Nina herself or Archil, I mentioned before, they started as writers and then they moved to uh, making films, writing a script uh, for films. Do you think that actually the filmmaking is closer to literature than to the theater, as many critics uh, said, oh, film is actually taking theater to a different level. For me, it seems like film is actually taking the perspective from a narrative and uh, enlarging, increasing, uh, updating it. How do you feel about that? Well, I think um, just from modern, writing from modern literature, 20th century and 21st. I think that this is a classic thing that people do. Um, in, in, in Bloom, we have a moment that's very startling. We have the kidnapping that happens, and then almost the next scene is a wedding. What happened? to everything in between. Well, everything in between was probably very dark and nasty, and we can imagine what it was. 
we don't really need it. If your mind can make that jump that, okay, she's kidnapped, probably raped, um, taken somewhere in the country. We do find that out from just her conversation. Um, so yes, I would say that, that film is more like literature than it is like theater. Theater, you have uh, so many limitations. Whereas the word and writing, you don't have those limitations. And with film, you do as far as technology is concerned. But story-wise, you don't have limitations. You can take things from wherever you want. So yeah, I think it's less, less live theater, more writing and film are closer together. Yeah, thank you, Marina. Any other questions? Thank you, Ilana, for this wonderful question. Well, I can just don't talk about, I can talk yeah, about ahead. the film a little bit. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know that it's happening in 92 in a newly sovereign Georgia, um, which is already descending into what be, would become years of civil war with Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Um, these two ter ter territories um, had Russian backing independence movements of their own. Um, the film opens on Eka with a background on a talk show about how Georgians are warriors by their very nature. I love that, by their very nature. And how they should all be armed. Um, Eka delivers a letter to her mother. Um, we don't know that the father, what, that it's from the father. We don't know anything about her home life, but we know that the mother's gotten a letter. And the next thing that's a little bit confusing for people is that we meet two best friends because the film is really about two best friends. And we meet these two best friends in a very aggressive mob of a breadline. And immediately we go to Natia's apartment. So we've been in Eka's apartment, we've met her mother, we've met her sister, and then all of a sudden we're in somebody else's apartment. And both girls have dark hair, so I've heard people, they were confused about the two girls. Um, but it's really about two girls and two different apartments. Um, and we understand that Eka has a sister and her father is away for some reason and we understand later that he's in prison. The other apartment is Natia, where her grandmother is the ruler and she has a brother and an alcoholic father. Um, although the film is about two girls, Eka is the main protagonist and she's determined, fearless, incorrigible, impatient problem solver. But we know that, you know, in eight minutes, we know that she's, she can, she's strong enough to take care of herself. And we're introduced to this room in her house where there's a door shut. And soon we understand that this is representing her absent father. And um, we understand in Natya's family, it's just completely chaotic aggressive, everyone crosses the line, whatever line there is. Yet not just easy going, but she's also easy to flare up. And she's popular and she's talented. But I was going to ask, you know, what do you believe are the main conflicts? Like what are Eka's conflicts and what are Natya's conflicts? Anybody? You no, know, I uh, uh, I don't want to uh, monopolize the conversation, but um, 
for me, the major theme was, and uh, related to the two girls, that they are trapped and they feel it. And you have this kind of literal and symbolic meaning of what you see. As you said, cinematography and the image is so powerful. And you see locks everywhere. Locks on the bathroom door, locks at the house door, locks at the yes. classroom door. I was yeah. shocked when I saw a lock locking uh, the classroom in a, uh, in a school. And actually you do, uh, and then you see the bars at the windows and um, all the other symbolism of being trapped. So for me, it was like a rebellion, a sort of minimal rebellion these girls could do to feel untrapped. They knew that uh, uh, physically they are trapped and there was no way out. They tried and they saw some sort of light. But as you said, probably only the very last image of the film is an opening. Uh, let's be done with this tribal violence because uh, bridal kidnapping um, and I, I, read, uh, I read recently an article about uh, this still going on in other rural parts of Georgia and not only that. Yeah. Um, and um, so it, it's a very complex situation. So maybe Natya saw the kidnapping as a way out. So I will marry and I will be out of this entrapment only to find out that she's entrapped in a different kind of uh, situation, the tribal. And the killing of, the, of Vlado, um, her boyfriend, is actually another uh, symbolic gesture for maintaining tribal power. So it's not only political, it's not only societal, it's also the tribal force of Georgian culture, I think. Yes, yes it is. And, you know, there's also something that we take for granted in our country. We think that privacy is a God-given right. You know, as, especially Americans, they want their privacy. They, need, they think they need their privacy. Whereas other cultures, there's no such thing. It's not even, you know, she never even could hide in the bathroom. You know, somebody wanted to come in or... Yeah, there is no privacy, so there's no place to hide, and absolutely no place to hide in the in the town. Um, I, I also think to add to your to discussion and uh, of being trapped, there's also this level of being in the survival mode all the time. Not only because of ancient traditions that are not lo no longer useful for modern times and for women or, you know, for Georgia's emancipation, you know, in 92, but also the fact that people were fighting for bread. And I remember the lines and I remember doing that as a kid growing up and staying in lines to get milk and bread. Basic, you know, basic, you know, <laughs> the basic uh, foods actually that would help your survival, not thriving you know so this is that the the title is simple but so powerful how can you bloom as a nation if you're kept at this level of being an animal of thinking about food all the time they're having mm -hmm. a small feast when natia's you know on natia's birthday but yes. they she had to go in depth you know the grandma to do that yeah yes. and the fact and that the they're kids fighting and the kids talk about debt like they know what debt is. They make they jokes know. about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they know that the value of bread, you know what that means and how, how hard it is to be creative and artistic when you're hungry. I felt the hunger. I felt they were hungry all the time. And I yeah. know that feeling. And I just remember when, uh, when one of my uh, friends, his mom was a brilliant doctor, um, you know, and she said, I remember communism. I remember just one scene, me being in a huge line for chicken and fighting for that chicken. And I was holding that chicken on my breast and it was dripping blood on my, on my chest. And she's like, mm. I will never forget that. And it's, it's so powerful in a way that it's, I think Eastern Europeans kind of stop themselves from speaking about that because it seems so unrealistic that it, it seems like, <laughs> you know, when we talk about it, 
but this these are, this is not fiction and i think this movie the movie was brilliant about it but it, because instead of showing the fight for meat because we needed meat to, you needed you know there was we didn't have protein. protein right we needed protein uh we they showed the need for bread which is far more beautiful and <laughs> you know a little bit more poetic but the message is the same uh, uh, and more uh, and more basic so I, I wrote down Eka's conflicts. Uh, she's bullied by two punk locals. Mm -hmm. And we learn later, one of them, his name is Coppola. And it turns out that it's possible that her father may have killed his father. And that's why he bothers her every time she's walking home. Mm -hmm. So that, um, and, and, Eka doesn't seem to be interested in boys at all, but she's very caught up in her best friend's dramas. Um, and she's beginning to wonder about her father's incarceration and the reason why he was incarcerated. But, but the thing that she can't do is she cannot go visit him yet. Mm -hmm. No, she cannot visit him in prison because actually she really doesn't know why he's there. Natia's conflicts are no peace in her family, but that's just normal in her family. That's the way her family acts. Um, she has no privilege of her own space. Um, and she has two boys that are in love with her. Kote, who's obsessed with her, she does not love him. And then she has some special relationship with Lado this lanky boy who gives her a gun. Uh, what do you think about, um, what does that show when a boy gives her a gun? <laughs> Not a flower or a bouquet of flowers, but a gun, no. that was shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Nana says that it was to show how much he cared about her and loved her and to protect her. And that's why she cared for it. You know, that it was, um, a, it was complimentary. I mean, to me, it's not complimentary, but um, to, to them, it is. So um, those, I feel like, are the kind of main conflicts of the two girls. Um, Marina, don't you think there is an overlap between the two potential but not uh, exposed uh, love triangles in the movie? Because we infer that, or we are made um, uh, infer that um, it was actually not um, Eka's father who killed uh, Coppola, but her mother, because all of the secrets that are going on. So it was a man killing another man for a woman or a woman killing a man for another man. And the girls do precisely or might be caught in the same circle because um, uh, what's his name? Um, Cobb's uh, uh, friend is Co killing, Coca's friends is killing Lado for um, his friend's wife. So it feels like in a way there are two parallel stories, but somehow one is more explicit, someone is um, uh, hidden uh, very well, and it seems to me that Eka is going to visit her father in prison uh, at the end because she's actually realizing what was going on by being involved in uh, Natia's life. And Natia's dramas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't think about the fact that the mother might have killed, uh, uh, might have been the uh, might have been the murderer. Um, she doesn't say her yeah, daughter. Yeah. Yeah. The her daughter. It's ambiguous. Yes. Yes. Um, so I I hadn't really thought of that. It's possible. It's, and it's, it's also Eka who is uh, throwing the gun. It's not Natia. So as if Eka wants to break that chain of violence. Absolutely. That's why I like the film, because yeah. she wanted to break the chain of violence. And she thought of such a brilliant, simple way to do it. Throw the gun away. 
I think Michelle has a question. If do you want to oh, unmute yourself? I was going to say I had. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I realized as I'm sort of uh, I d I just watched the film this morning, so as it's kind of all seeping in, that at that final scene, um, that actually I I understood. I mean, it caused me to sort of reinterpret what was going on with Eka during the film, and in some ways, uh, it, in some ways she blooms during the film. In some ways, she also is uh, the one who is closest to breaking the pattern of women feeling that they simply have to subjugate them to men. And one of the moments that was most interesting was the moment she took a swig and then she went out and danced from her heart as if she didn't care whether those men watched her or not. She was dancing for herself, for her friend. And, and then it seemed like from there, it led to the decisions about the gun and, and so on uh, and the actions that so I, 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 she, I felt like I wish I would know her in 10 years, you know, like how did she grow, mm -hmm. what kind of person did she become? Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's yes, uh, that. I, yeah. I wanted to say something about the dance. I was trying to remember everything yeah. that you said, Michelle, and then, but I wanted to say something about the dance. Um, Nana, director, says that the dance um, is not a wedding dance. I thought at first that Eka was dancing a male dance. Um, and this was her way of, um, uh, of rebellion. But it's not a male dance. You can see that the, the movements are very much female. Um, the movement of her hand on her hip is like a pouring a water pitcher, um, very female kind of dance, but Nana says that it's a kind of um, silly dance, um, and Eka is doing it to, in her bitterness over her friend's entrapment and her friend's situation. Plus, Natia is, a, is kind of miffed at Eka because she's not letting her off the hook. And she doesn't want to feel guilty, but she does feel guilty and she does feel defensive, Natia. And so Eka says, okay, I'm going to do this dance for you. And Natia is the first one who embraces her when her dance is over. It's a very powerful moment. And Mutu, the, the DP, shoots it beautifully with patience, real, patience, you know, to show the whole dance and the way that he shoots it. It's just beautiful. Yeah, and I might add, I, I was in Tbilisi very briefly when I was studying in the Soviet Union, so it was in the winter of, of 74, and all of our encounters with student groups and people that we met who we came fast friends with within two days, uh, they all danced, they all sang, they danced. It, it's, a, it's a normal part of culture. It's part of how you express yourself there. So it's not like people wait up and then there's a wedding and suddenly people dance the way yeah. that sometimes happens in America. Uh, so it, I didn't take it as like a special wedding thing, but I do, there, there is a strong sense of that, that cultural, of that uh, outlet, whether it's singing or dancing, that you can be yourself. And there's, to me, there was also a sense that Natia was not going to be in a position to do that because she has now given up, she's now subservient to her husband. And so she yeah. won't be the one to express herself in that way, in that kind of setting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Do you have any other questions? Thank you so much, Michelle, for your intervention and uh, for watching the film this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was very enjoyable. I do want to say something about the song. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The, the song in the film is uh, um, Otar Ramashvili. It's called Every Night. It's a very kind of corny song, but it plays three times in the film. It plays, the song is some, sung three times, first by a group of girlfriends at Eka's flat, that wonderful scene where the girls are singing, sneaking cigarettes and wine after school. I mean, these are 14, 15 year old girls drinking wine. Um, and on the balcony, when, when Eka and Natia see Lado, the same song is being sung, and it, in the credits, the same song. So that song is all the way through. It is a very catchy tune. I, I think I, 
I, I don't know if he, all of you who saw it remember it, but it is, it's very, um, is there Marina, some do you know what, yeah, go ahead, Carol. I'm just going to ask, is there some significance in the culture? Is this a, a is it a pop song or, um, yes, it's a, I think it's kind of a, um, love song, a corny love song. Mm -hmm. No, uh, when you see the, uh, they have it subtitled, so you'll be able to see it. But it's it's really just, I saw you, I longed for you, I went home, nothing will work out, something like this. It's, it's very <laughs> similar to the kinds of songs that people, they're both traditional and newly composed songs in the Balkans, for example. And people love nothing more than to go to a restaurant and listen to those songs all night long. You know, they're... Yeah. They, they express that, you know, just uh, that idea that I can, I'm burning up in love with you for a kind of thing. And so that felt very familiar to me from that point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't so, wait to see the about, movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marina, is want, there anything you want to... Yes, I wanted to say something about the director, the directors. So Nana Ekt Ekta Mashvili, um, is a writer and a film director, and she was born in 1978 in Tbilisi. Um, she studied philosophy at the State University in Tbilisi, and then screenwriting at the Academy of Film and Television in Germany. Um, her stories were first published in 1999 um, in a literary magazine called Arili, um, after writing prose and screenplays in 1999, um, or in 2011, she directed a short film called Dada, Waiting for Mom. Um, in 2012, with Simon Gross, she completed her first feature film, international feature, and that's in Bloom. And Simon was born May 8th, 1976, in Berlin. He studied film directing in film school, school in Munich. And after directing several short films, he shot his first feature film, Feta Morgana. And this is where he first met uh, Nana and his collaboration with her began. Um, his second feature in Bloom is produced by him and co-directed with Nana. And it won, in Bloom won 30 awards. That's a lot of awards. Um, and then their latest film, My Happy Family, again, co-directed with Nana, had its world premiere at Sundance. And Simon runs a production company called Haller Film in Georgia. Uh, in Bloom, it's premiered at the 63rd Berlin Film Festival, where I saw, I saw it in Berlin at the film festival. Um, it won the International Confederation of Art and Cinema, and um, it was the Oscar submission for 2014. Uh, in 2013, Berlin International Film Festival, uh, the critics called it uh, the birth of New Georgian wave. In Hong Kong, the film was called the Spring of Georgian Cinema, um, and Fripreski has called the film a sign of the rebirth of Georgian film. Um, in 2013, Nana Ektavishmili and Simon Gross were chosen among the 10 most prominent European directors from Variety's uh, 10 directors to watch at Carlo Vivari Film Festival. Um, then I wanted to just tell you a little bit. I read that I listened to their interviews and they said a lot of interesting stuff. And first, my first um, curiosity was how do they work together? You know, how do any co-directors work together? This is, this is a, a, you know, huge thing, huge piece of work. So um, they said in their interview from Sarajevo that they have long periods of casting, one year. Uh, they shoot two or three shots a day, not very many, so two or three shots a day. They rehearse five or seven takes, a lot of rewrites, 
it sounds like constant rewrites. And since Nana is the writer, I guess that's very convenient for them. They can keep on rewriting and rewriting and, and forming their script. And they said that eventually, after all this, uh, these long periods of, of getting ready, they speak with one voice. They, their words, we speak with one voice. And they try very hard to make the film authentic. And I think that in Bloom is very authentic. You can feel that right away. Um, Nana says that she's very concerned about women who want to be independent. Um, and she's also has always been concerned in her life when she hears somebody in her country so angry that they say, I want to kill that person. And I think that this is really, you can really tell that this idea is present in her writing. The shocking feeling of hearing somebody say, I'm going to kill that guy. I'm going to kill him. And, you know, and carry, and people carry it through. Um, and then I'll read what Nana said about um, working together as direct, directors requires us to trust each other. Film directing is really an egocentric profession. So true. That's <laughs> all you think about. No family, no food, no nothing. No, it's all about what you want. And she says that mostly it's about what you want. Um, but when you're two people making films together, you have to concentrate more on the subject and on cinema itself. You need to be in good dialogue with each other, put aside your ego, and pay attention to what the other person thinks. You have to prove yourself. Maybe you're totally sure of your opinion, but when you're in dialogue with someone, it clarifies whether you're, you are or you're, or you're right, you're right or wrong. You have to be open. And Simon says, sometimes you fight, but you also fight when you direct alone. You're, you're fighting inside of yourself and, and probably, you know, with your crew. Um, the difference is that we talk to each other. And while this can be exhausting, you have a response right away. And the response is not only happening in your own head. So you've talked it over thoroughly and you've got another person who's helping you um, for your goal of, of what you have already decided on, what you want, what you want to accomplish. And then Nana says, you also need time for this kind of dialogue. We're, they are a couple, which I didn't know. I, you know. I never assume anything in the film industry, but they are a couple. We live together, so we have time uh, to pre, for pre-production. Um, when asked, uh, a critic asked them about the division of labor, um, and especially in a film with so many bodies and so much commotion on the set. And Simon said, we don't have strict rules. The most important thing is we have the same vision. Um, in Bloom, most of the scenes were shot in very long takes, almost one long take per scene. That means that a take is sometimes three to four minutes. And afterwards, Nana and I have a lot to discuss. Because of the way we shoot, we have the time to do that. We talk about the scene and what we want to change. Um, we take, we watch the take together in front of a monitor, monitor, but the goal we're trying to reach has already been, is very clear to them. So I thought that that was interesting to hear about how people collaborate because film is, completely a collaboration effort. You can't have everything your way. You have to, you have to be talking things over with everybody. So, yeah, so. Um, Thank you, Marina. That's, yes. This was wonderful, um, you know, very um, enlightening of our discussion to hear more about how they work together. I, I wasn't aware that there were a couple, um, yeah. you know, uh, so the, 
this um, rounds up even more the, the their working progress the working process. Um, so if there is any, we're kind of um, approaching the one hour uh, reserve for the discussion. This was a very uh, dynamic and engaging discussion, but uh, we have time for one more question if you like, or if there's anything you'd like to ask Marina uh, or a comment ask about the away. film or anything. So now is the time <laughs> before. Well, this, we, is, uh, uh, this is Bogdan here. Bogdan, do you I, want to? Uh, okay, good. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to say yeah. thank you. Thank you for joining us on Filmabee and for everyone that's come again on the platform. And uh, Marina, we would love to have you come block uh, for us. So let us know if you want to review some of our films and have you on board or continue a collaboration with you because uh, it's just uh, so insightful what, what you spoke did, did about you today. Say, did you say block? Blog, 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 no, no, block out like the movements of the actors. Yeah, yeah, Locking. yeah, <laughs> yeah, so um, as, a, as a film director, this was, uh, I mean, very, um, for me, very interesting to, to listen to, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome, my Yes, pleasure. thank you, Marina. Yeah. Thank you. Anything yeah. else before we no? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Ilana, do you want to say something? I feel like you want to say something, but I don't know yeah, if you mute or not. But, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if we still have time uh, because uh, uh, it was talked, uh, it has been uh, a long conversation about the kitchen scenes in Eastern European films. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. we have at least two, if we consider, uh, if not more. Um, uh, kitchen uh, scenes in this movie. Yes. Do you think it's a, a topic, a theme? What is it? Or it's more of a psychoanalytical <laughs> um, coming out of something else. Uh, how do you place or where do you place this in a larger perspective beyond Eastern European films? Well, within Eastern European films or just uh, kitchen is is very important place, very important place. And the more people you push in your little kitchen, the better. <laughs> and this is where the conversations happen. Um, I mean, it's kind of, it's famous. Uh, Russian kitchens, uh, Czech kitchens. Um, I think this is probably, you know, number one is where people drink. Number two is where people eat. Number three is where people relax and conversation comes along, however it comes along. Um, is this what you mean? I, I mean, it is a famous situation where people talk about kitchen conversations and kitchen gatherings um, because maybe it's too dangerous to gather in other places and and uh, other places could be bugged, uh, public places you cannot talk, you cannot say what you really think. So I think that uh, within a kitchen, it's the most comfortable place and probably the places where the most interesting conversations happen. I know that it's happened to me many times in tiny little kitchens with hardly any place to move around because there's other people around you, but it's the best place. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought of that, but thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other last, the last question, really? <laughs> no. Okay, well, um, this is, uh, this is, was a wonderful, wonderful discussion. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, everybody, for coming here for uh, choosing, uh, you know, to drink your morning coffee with us over the beautiful sun in Seattle. I say so, one uh, more thing. Yes, more sure. Thing. Yes. So I want to I wanna talk about two other filmmakers. Um, one was Jorg uh, Avashvili um, and his film, uh, Corn Island, and mm -hmm. um, The Other Bank. And mm -hmm. the other film that I want to recommend, which is quite difficult, probably more difficult than in Bloom, is Nana Urshadzi's film, Ang, uh, Scary Mother. 
this oh. was a this was a film that was at SIF, and actually both George of George's films were both in at SIF also. So I just wanted to you know suggest that there's there's a lot of Georgian directors right now. It's a very interesting area of film, but um, those two are the ones that I, I would suggest for people to look at, especially Scary Mother. <laughs> Thank you, Marina. Maybe I can uh -huh. send, I will send the follow-up email with the edited version of this, uh, okay, great. Um, of the recording and maybe with your suggestions of more, film, more Georgian films to watch and a link to your book. So please buy Marina's uh, book too. <laughs> and if, if you want to buy my book, um, Small Press Distributor has it and you can buy it straight from them. Okay, great. And um, I will there, send you the link. Yeah, uh, okay, I think I have great. everybody's email. Yeah. yeah. So I will yeah. follow up on that. Please okay. let's support Marina's poetry and creativity. And I hope we will be back together as SIF next year. I you hope know, so. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work. Okay. Thank you for okay. being here. And uh, watch nice. on, on film a <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye.